We're going to start this video with one of my new catchphrases. There's basically nothing new in this video, okay? <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm really proud. I can actually, I think now I can actually like really smile because uh, my, my gums are healing. Great. Okay. So what if we're looking at a plate now? Some sort of circular object. And what if this, the density depends on how far we are. How far we are from the center. And again, there's a bunch of problems that we could construct like this. And as long as the density only depends on one thing, we can evaluate it in Calc 2. It's when density depends on two things that we're going to need a double integral. And if it depends on three things, we need a triple integral. And again, those are Calc 4 stuff. We're not going to talk about them here. But these are the two examples we're doing, linear density and radial density. But really, you can do all sorts of kinds of densities, all different shapes, kind of the same thing. Just have to set them up. So let's say this thing has radius r. Let's also say that this is a circle. Please pretend that this is a circle. Okay, and, th and then we're saying that the density kind of depends on where we are. So, you know, if we're at this, <laughs> you know, if we're at this point, all of this will have the same density. And x is just how far we are. All right, or maybe we're a little farther away. That'll have a different density. So if we want the total mass, the mass is the density times well, density times the length for one dimension, density times the area in two dimensions. So we're in two dimensions now. Okay, so how do we find little pieces of area that we can use and approximate? Well, let's look at it. The density depends on the radius. Let's divide this into a bunch of tiny little washers. Don't, don't worry, we're not doing the washer method. I, I, hope the, I hope the word washer doesn't scare you. But they are little washers. And we, we can find, we can pretend, as long as the density is a continuous function, we can pretend that the density is the same on this tiny little interval. Well, what's going to be the mass of that tiny little interval? I don't remember. I think I do actually remember. But uh, it doesn't matter if we remember or not. We can find it out. So at any xi, and again, we're going to do this for, split this into n different washers. At any of those washers, we can find the mass. And if we just add up all of, the, all of those washers, we'll get the total mass of the plate. Okay, it's, it's, that's calc 2. It's just what we did in the first video. It's what we're going to do in the next video and the next video. Just dividing things up into really tiny pieces and adding them all up. That's an integral. That's what integrals are. Calc 2 is fun, right? It's cool. And, and just know those patterns. You're going to forget a lot of this, but if you can remember the patterns, that's really going to be where you can get some long-term value out of this class. Okay. Calm down. I, 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 my master's degree is in applied mathematics, by the way. I like using math. Um, so, although not so much in physics. I like physics, but I mostly use math for other things, like money stuff is where I really am passionate about. Okay, let's go. Radial density and mass. So, we need the density. We're, remember, density. Go back, go back. What's the relationship between density and mass? Well, in the first one, we said mass is density times length, if it's one dimension. Well, now we're in two dimensions. It'll be density times that area. So we're dividing this into really tiny pieces so that on this little washer, the density is basically constant. So the mass here is just going to be the density times the area. What's the area of this? Well... The inner circle has radius x sub i. The outer circle has radius x sub i plus delta x. And let's unroll. If we unroll this, it becomes kind of like a, a rectangle. It's not quite a rectangle, but it's kind of like a rectangle where uh, this is delta x, right? 
delta x. Think about cutting along that line I just drew, this line right here. And if we unravel it, it's basically a rectangle. Not quite, but basically. And that's its width. And again, the reason it's not quite a rectangle is this bottom one is the circumference of the inner circle and the top one's the circumference of the big circle, which are slightly different. But this is just two pi times the radius, the circumference of a circle. Two pi times the radius. And again, technically the top would be two pi times x sub i plus delta x. If you really wanted to be real precise and you could use what we know about parallelograms and areas of parallelograms. And then what you could do is you could use what we know about Riemann sums to say that actually when we came up with the Riemann sum, it doesn't matter where those x sub i's were. You remember x sub i star? I said it just has to be anywhere in that, in that, uh, re, in, in that sub interval of the partition, but it doesn't actually matter where it is. And that's how it all connects to not matter. Um, but anyway, so the mass then of the ith piece is going to be, you know, whatever the, de whatever the density is at that little radius, x sub i, times the area, which is 2 pi, times x sub i, times delta x. That's our area of this little washer. Now, the total mass is just going to be what happens when we add all of these up. And delta x gets really small. So, what is that going to look like? Mass with radial density. That's going to look like the integral from a radius starting at zero up to a radius going all the way to r, whatever the radius of that plate is, of 2 pi. We can take the 2 pi out in front. Here, let's, let's keep track of what we, what we do. 2 pi times x times the density function times delta x. And as delta x gets really small, we call it dx. That's how we can find the mass of something with radial density. It's kind of funny. I don't want to confuse you. But we have washers here. But the integral really looks like the shell method. <laughs> They're not related at all, but it is kind of funny. Um, it doesn't look like the washer method. It looks like the shell method, and it's not related to either one of them, even though we do have washers here. Okay, so that's how you find the mass of a two-dimensional object that has a radial density function. And again, you could come up with this sort of same logic for any kind of shape, as long as the density only depends on one factor. That is within your power. So let's do an example. Ejemplo dos. Let rho of x be the square root of x in grams per centimeters squared. Again, look at our density function. Here we're talking about two-dimensional objects. Our density function is now related to area. Okay be the radial density of some disk of radius 4 centimeters. Find its mass. So again, to visualize this, we have some sort of disk as a 4 centimeter radius. Uh, and then the, de the density depends on how far out from the center we are. So at the, at the middle of the circle, what's happening? At the middle of the desk, the density is basically zero grams per centimeter squared. So the, the material, if you will, becomes infinitely thin or infinitely light, or maybe it just becomes this tiny little hole poked in the middle of this. All right. Maybe it's kind of like a Frisbee. I don't know. And then as we get further away... As x increases, and x is the distance from the center, as x gets bigger and bigger, the density is increasing according to the square root function. So the weight, in other words, the mass, 
to the thickness, however you want to think about this, we don't know the exact situation, getting heavier, thicker, whatever, as we go near the end of this. All right? Maybe it's like a Frisbee, but a, a weirdly designed Frisbee. I don't know. But that's the idea here. So the total mass, well, we know how to find it. We just use the formula. The total mass, because we have radial density, is going to be 2 pi times the integral from 0 up to its radius, which is 4 centimeters, times x times the density. There we go. Now just calculate this integral, use the right units, and you're done. That's basically the end of the video. Again, if you want, you can stick around, pause the video, do this problem out, get a final answer, and let's see if we have the same thing. Otherwise, good luck. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see if I can do this. See if I remember how to do an integral. Well, first off, we need to combine these. This is x to the first. This is x to the one half. Multiplying monomials, we just add the exponents if they have the same base, which they do. So this becomes x to the three halves. We get two pi antiderivative. We add an exponent and divide by that exponent. Let's keep that constant in, in front. That's a 4 pi over 5 that will stick out in front. And then plug in 4, we get 4 to the 5 halves. Minus plug in 0, oh, that's just going to be 0. 4 to the 5 halves, that's the square root of 2. Sorry, that's the square root of 4 to the 5th, so it's 2 to the 5th. That's 32. So we get 4 pi over 5 times 32, wow, which 128 pi over 5 is our exact answer. I'm pretty sure there was a problem I was looking at earlier in a completely different section that had the same exact answer. And then again, our answer is in grams. For applications, I will, 99% of the time for applications, I will want an approximate answer. Okay. Um... Exact is good for most of this class, but for applications, if you, if you say the weight of something is 128 pi over 5, nobody really knows what you're talking about. It's about 80.425 grams. All right. There we go. And again, we know it's in grams because of that density function. We also need to make sure that everything's in centimeters. Otherwise, we're going to have to convert something. That's how heavy this plate is. Let me know if you have any questions, and bye-bye.